Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Robert Smith and today we are going to be discussing how to prevent machine failure caused by thermal stress using Autodesk Nastran Incat. There are several common reasons why machine failure occurs. Parts can fatigue over the product service life, vibration from normal operation often caused by motion, inadequate designs for the application, deformation and excess bending of components, generating or applying excessive loading to components, and during operation the machine can be exposed to extreme temperatures causing component failure. This is our focus today. The expansion and contraction of materials due to temperature can affect machine design in a number of ways. Parts that are designed to have clearance between them may begin to interfere with one another as their temperatures change. Moving parts can begin to rub or lock up, and stationary parts begin to push and pull against other stationary parts, causing stress. Parts made of dissimilar materials expand and contract at different rates, causing stresses at their connections and contact points. Parts with non-uniform temperature gradients will see non-uniform expansion and contraction, causing parts to change shape or warp. Understanding these effects during the design process will allow for a design flexible enough to tolerate and withstand these effects. Let's take a look at ways in which machine failure can negatively affect your business. Once a failure occurs, the impact can be massive on the end customer and yourself. Machine downtime can cause production delays and lost profit. Service and maintenance is required to repair and fix the failure. Parts can be scrapped and material wasted. Project schedules can be impacted, causing delays. The company brand and reputation can be damaged due to poorly operating machines and most often the overall product or project profitability is reduced. What are the costs associated with machine failure? What does it cost to determine the cause of a failure after a product is complete? What does it cost to redesign and rework a product during the manufacturing process, or worse, after production is complete? And what about retesting the product to ensure that the fix is adequate? The costs will be different for every manufacturer, but the costs are always too high. Machine failure can have far-reaching effects within your organization beyond engineering. Someone in legal might be concerned with safety or lawsuits associated with the failure that occurs in the field. Someone in manufacturing might be impacted by unscheduled rework of a machine. This can disrupt the manufacturing schedule causing project delays that could have a domino effect on the rest of the organization. Some of the most common methods employed to prevent machine failure include over-engineering the design, which adds to cost, excessive physical testing and prototypes, which adds to costs, making adjustments and changes on the shop floor before shipping your machine to the end customer, adding to costs and delivery time, and leveraging prior experience and knowledge, which makes manufacturers over-reliant on specific individuals. Today we are highlighting the benefits of another method, called simulation. Let's cover some basics. What is simulation? Simulation is an integral part of the digital prototyping process. Essentially, the 3D CAD model of your product is your digital prototype, the sole source of truth from which information flows to design and engineering, test and validation, manufacturing and production, and sales and marketing. Simulation takes place in the test and validation phase of the digital prototyping process. This is the phase of your process where critical questions need to get answered. Questions like, will my part break? How light can I make it? What happens when the temperature changes? These questions have traditionally been answered by building a physical prototype for testing, a costly and time-consuming process. Leveraging your digital prototype and the Autodesk Simulation software portfolio, products can be tested in a virtual environment thereby reducing or eliminating costly physical prototype iterations. Why simulate? Simulation leads to better products in less time and at lower costs. Performance can be predicted and materials and design features can be optimized. This leads to a higher quality product. Costs can be reduced as fewer physical prototypes are needed for testing and defects that may lead to unsatisfied customers can be uncovered while corrective action is still relatively inexpensive. Finally, innovation is fostered. Designers and engineers are free to explore more what-if scenarios as testing these ideas digitally is more feasible than manufacturing a prototype. 
one of those crazy ideas may be your next big innovation. So when is the best time to simulate and optimize your design? Over the product development life cycle, the ability to affect the functional capabilities of the design declines as the cost of making changes increases. The best time to identify failure modes is during the design and engineering phase. This way, the design is still flexible enough to make the necessary changes, and cost of those changes is minimalized. What makes Autodesk Simulation different? Who uses Autodesk Simulation? Autodesk Simulation is built from the ground up to be fast and easy to use. Note the triangle graphic on screen. This triangle represents the entire community of engineers and designers. Traditionally, highly educated and highly specialized individuals, represented by the top portion of the triangle, have been relied upon to perform FEA analysis. These individuals are typically career analysts. They are expensive people who use expensive tools. This type of analysis is often done at the end of a design cycle for validation purposes. Autodesk simulation is part of a newer approach to simulation called upfront simulation. It's for the everyday engineer or designer. These individuals often wear many hats and running analysis software may only be a part-time role. They need results early in the design process to help them make more informed decisions while the product is still in development. For this reason, they need the tool to be easy to learn and easy to use. Autodesk Simulation serves these users. Autodesk offers a complete portfolio of simulation products to help you predict product performance by optimizing and validating your designs. The Autodesk Simulation family of products enable you to integrate mechanical, structural, fluid flow, thermal, composite, and plastic injection molding simulation tools into your product development process, helping to reduce costs and speed time to market. What is NASTRAN? NASTRAN is a general purpose FEA, or finite element analysis, solver. In the 1960s, NASA developed NASTRAN in an effort to standardize FEA solver codes, which were then in their infancy. The result was the code that NASA used to bring the U.S. to the leading edge of the space age. NASA released this code into the public domain, where it has since evolved and is now the basis of some of the industry's finest and most respected FEA software platforms, including Autodesk Nastran. Autodesk Nastran is proven and credible, providing accurate results for advanced linear, nonlinear, dynamics, and heat transfer analyses. It is scalable in that it is compatible with a large number of specialized third-party pre- and post-processors. What is Nastran InCAD? Autodesk Nastran InCAD is the power of the Nastran solver embedded in your CAD system. Available for multiple CAD platforms as a network license, the CAD environment that designers and engineers are already familiar with then becomes the preprocessor for setting up simulations and the postprocessor for reviewing results. This eliminates the need for a standalone simulation software package. Autodesk Nastran InCAD supports a wide array of analysis types. Linear static stress and normal modes are commonly found in embedded simulation systems. Nastran InCAD takes it to the next level with advanced nonlinear, static and transient stress, dynamic response, and thermal analysis types. Now let's take a deeper dive into a full demonstration. Welcome to this demonstration of thermal heat transfer using Nastran InCAD. We're going to talk about how to prevent machine failure due to thermal stress. Excessive heat causes various materials to expand at different rates, as is the case with the yogurt filling station and the Osgood industrial machine design seen here. The empty cups are sanitized, filled with fruit and yogurt. Several times per day the components are cleaned before running new products. Observe several nozzles used for cleaning in the graphics view. The heat that is generated during the wash cycle is hot enough to significantly expand the material used for the parts. Because we are dealing with food, the system is free of small components such as O-rings, and this requires tight tolerances to maintain pressure in the chamber. You can see in this cross-section we have a piston and sleeve made from two different materials. Peak is used for the piston, which is a thermoplastic polymer and stainless steel is used for the sleeve. The material properties come directly from the CAD design and contain all the information we need for the analysis. 
We have the conduction, specific heat, as well as thermal expansion coefficient. We are also given elastic modulus for thermal stress studies, which can be made temperature dependent for high fidelity. We only need to run half the model to gain accurate results for thermal and linear static studies. There are symmetry restraint options available to make it fast and easy to define the behavior. There are two loads to apply in this scenario. First, the initial condition will be set to room temperature or 294 degrees Kelvin. Secondly, we are going to heat the components to 350 degrees Kelvin or 170 degrees Fahrenheit to emulate the wash cycle for the machine. Nastrin NCAD provides automatic as well as full manual control over the contact conditions between the components. In this case, there is a small gap between the piston and sleeve. We want to allow the two parts to slide against each other. And finally, let's mesh or divide the parts into several pieces to be analyzed and run the study. Again, we want to understand more about the thermal expansion due to the wash cycle. What kind of impact will it have on the normal operation of the yogurt filling station? Let's begin with displacement in the X direction. We can see right away there is some expansion on the piston right above the sleeve, an early indication the parts are contacting each other. Let's also take a look at the stress plot. Here we can observe the impact between the piston and the sleeve after contact has occurred. It is apparent that the peak material for the piston is expanding much faster than the sleeve. Since we are analyzing these components in the comfort of the CAD design software, we can make any modifications to the geometry and simply rerun the study. For example, we will change the diameter of the main bore on the sleeve. Back in the assembly, it is simply a matter of updating the mesh and rerun the study. This workflow encourages design validation early from concept to release for manufacturing, when making modifications is most affordable to do so. The results may improve with the change, but the reality is the wash cycle requires the components to cool off before running the machine. Let's dive deeper into each of the parts to fully understand the cooling process. With the sleeve open by itself, we will begin by running the thermal expansion scenario. We can then determine deflection quickly without the interaction from other parts. Once again, we will set up the initial room temperature of the components and apply the heat from the wash cycle. In the rest of the linear static studies, we have already applied the symmetry constraint and two other constraints to prevent the part from moving in the X or Y direction. First, we will look at the displacement in the X direction. The legend provides the range of displacement for minimum and maximum, but we may want to know the displacement for specific areas on the part. The probe tool will help to check the inner bore of the sleeve. It looks like there is not a lot of expansion for the stainless steel material. Based on the results so far, we know we have to wait for the parts to cool off, but how long exactly does it take? This temperature for the initial condition is starting at 350 degrees Kelvin, and we have a convection boundary condition that has already started. In here we can specify the air temperature surrounding the filler, and it could be time dependent. In this case the washer may still be a little warm for a few minutes, and we want to take that into account. The convection coefficient can also be temperature dependent. This is a nonlinear transient study that we're running over a 50 minute cooling period. After running the study, we are able to determine the maximum temperature of the sleeve at every minute of this range in time. The beauty of running nonlinear studies is the ability to view the results as it's running. Not only can we view the temperature results, we can also take a look at the maximum temperature over time. This is a huge time saver for studies that take longer to run. We are able to take notes early before the analysis is finished, or stop the calculation at will and make changes to the setup if necessary. The solver is finished. Taking a look at the graph, the stainless steel sleeve quickly drops in temperature within 15 minutes. Animations can also help to observe the behavior of the cooling process. Nastrain NCAD keeps track of the result plots for all 50 time steps during the calculation for visualization and data. Let's do the same thing for the piston since it's manufactured from a different material. Once again, we will set up a thermal expansion study to determine the displacement of the component by itself. We are starting at a room temperature and heating the part up to 350 degrees Kelvin. Let's also take advantage of multiple cases. 
Nastrian NCAT enables the ability to reuse boundary conditions with a drag and drop. We will run another scenario with a minimum body temperature of 310 degrees Kelvin. After running this study, we will know how much the diameter of the piston is expanding. This time we don't need the probe tool since the minimum and maximum displacement values are on the outside of the piston body. All we need is a plot that shows the displacement in the Z direction. We are getting a much larger expansion on the piston as opposed to the sleeve, indicating the problem with using parts made from widely different materials. Let's also take a look at the displacement plot for the second case with 310 degrees. Now these results are acceptable for running the machine. Our goal may be to cool the components to under 310 degrees prior to operation. Now let's find out how long it takes to cool the piston. Once again, we are starting at the peak temperature of 350 degrees Kelvin. The convection is the same as the sleeve study. As you have seen with the calculation on the sleeve, we can monitor the cooling behavior of the piston as well. As expected, we are observing the convection at work on the outside of the component. After the study is complete, we will know how long it takes to cool the piston, and we will also have the results that can be used in a thermal expansion study. The graph shows that it takes much longer to cool the peak material for the piston. It takes a full hour to reach 303 degrees Kelvin. We already ran a thermal expansion study using body temperature. Let's run that same type of study again, except this time we will use the actual non-uniform temperature from all the nodes as our load condition. This is a great way to gain high fidelity results for the displacement of the piston. Notice we can even choose from any of the 50 time steps from the nonlinear study. Once again, multiple cases can be used here to check the displacement at various times during the cooling period. We can see that the maximum displacement is well within reason for normal operation of the yogurt filler at this temperature. We now have a good understanding of the behavior of the components after the wash cycle is complete. Based on these results, we can make educated decisions on the length of time necessary to cool the components. We may recommend 45 minutes before normal operation begins. Since the washer runs in zones, it is best to start with the yogurt filler and move on to the rest of the machine for cleaning, providing plenty of time to cool. Back in the assembly, there is one other scenario worth looking into. At times, the food that is used in the filler may be heated. If that is the case, we should consider running this study. This time, the heat source is applied to the faces in the chamber, including the bottom faces of the piston. We will use a temperature since the food is constantly being moved in and out of the sleeve. The convection condition on the outside of the piston and sleeve will remain similar to the other studies at room temperature. Let's have a look at temperature. As you would expect, the stainless steel is conducting the heat much faster than the peak material. This could be an issue if it's not being distributed as much as we'd like. Once again, it's worth running a thermal stress study to ensure that these temperatures are not going to be a problem. We will set the initial condition to room temperature and heat the components up using the results that we just saw from the thermal study. After running the analysis, we will find out if there are any geometric changes necessary for running warm food products. Taking a look at the stress plot, it does not look like we are going to have a problem with warm food. If a design change is necessary, remember that we are doing this right in the CAD design environment. Simply make a change to any dimension or add new features to the model. Run the updated design and find out if your idea works or not. This is a great workflow for designers as well as the analyst who needs a robust solver for advanced study types. Thermal studies are just one of many types of calculations NAS Train NCAD is capable of. Be sure to watch more of our demonstrations showcasing nonlinear buckling and dynamic simulations for industrial machine designers. Autodesk NAS Train NCAD is a robust, easy to use tool that is fully embedded in Inventor and SolidWorks. We're going to discuss the benefits of using thermal heat transfer as well as the thermal expansion results to ensure the rotor on this brake assembly will not fail due to high stress concentrations. We'll focus on the rotor by itself and hide the other parts in the assembly. Autodesk Nastran is fully integrated in the Autodesk Inventor application. 
you will see the NASTRAN tab in the ribbon, as well as the FEA browser for easily setting up the study in the CAD environment. Let's begin by specifying linear steady state heat transfer for the analysis type. The material properties can be taken right from the CAD model. The material contains both the conductivity and thermal expansion coefficient for both of the studies we will set up and run during this video. Next, we'll mesh the part or divide it into smaller pieces to be analyzed. For the first analysis, we'll apply the boundary conditions that simulate the heat flux generated from the friction between the brake pad and the rotor, as well as the rate this material releases heat into the surrounding air. All the faces need to be selected, except for the two faces that are coming in contact with the brake pad. We'll input the outside temperature of 293 degrees Kelvin, or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Then the convection coefficient based on the material in ambient airflow. Next, we'll apply heat flux, or the amount of power per square millimeter, for both sides of the rotor. All that is left is to run the solver. This model takes about one minute to solve. Let's take a look at the results for temperature. The plot that you are about to see will provide the non-uniform temperature distribution that can be used as a load in the thermal expansion study. You can see some of the heat is transferred to the vanes on the inside of the rotor. We can now set up the linear static study using these temperatures and also apply the torque load as the vehicle comes to a stop. First, we need to hold the part down by fixing the holes where the rotor is fastened to the other parts in the brake assembly. We could use bolt connectors in this case if we included the hub in the analysis. Be sure to watch the video on bolt connectors to see how they work in Autodesk Nastran. Next, we'll apply the torque load on the rotor. We're going to apply the load on the two points in the center of the component. Before doing so, let's connect the points to the faces of the part using rigid body connectors. Notice there are two options for rigid body such as interpolation and rigid. Interpolation works best for applied loads. Rigid works well for prescribed displacements. Now we're ready to add the torque value to the two points. We'll apply an extreme load condition of 100 million newton millimeters or about 1 million inch pounds to both sides of the rotor. Subcases in the FEA browser are a great way to evaluate more than one scenario at a time and compare the results between them. Here we are going to select three of them. The first one that you see is analyzing the torque load alone. The second subcase will include the thermal load which comes from the previous study results. When applying the load, you will see the option to select the result file that was created when the analysis was complete. The third subcase is the thermal load by itself without the torque. After copying and pasting the study, we'll simply delete the two load conditions that were copied over. That's all we need to set up the linear static study. We're going to use the same mesh from the thermal analysis. This analysis also takes about one minute to solve. Let's take a look at the results using temperature as the only load condition. Starting with the displacement plot, we're observing a deflection of 0.3 millimeters due to the thermal expansion. By showing an exaggerated deformation and animating it, we can visually see how the rotor is moving. Next, we'll find out how that displacement is affecting the stresses in the model. We're seeing high stress in the arc between each fastener, as well as the areas behind the fastener. They are already beyond the yield strength of the material before the torque is applied. Next. We'll look at the stresses with the torque load only. We can see here the veins on the inside of the rotor are absorbing some of the stress. Finally, let's look at the stresses caused by a combination of the torque load and the thermal expansion. We'll use the same maximum value for the legend as the previous plot, as well as the same visibility settings. Notice the stresses at every other extrusion for the bolts 
are higher due to the placement of the veins. Perhaps by adding another vein in between, we can evenly distribute the stress. The changes that we make here in Inventor can be reanalyzed right inside the CAD design environment. There is no need to send the model back and forth between systems. Here we'll simply open the rotor in its own window and change the number of veins we would like to use. Then, after the study has been run, we can view the updated results for the new design. Looking again at the thermal stress with torque, we can see that the extra veins in between evenly distribute the stress at each of the extruded bosses for the fasteners. As you have seen, Autodesk Nastran in Inventor helped us to come up with a better rotor without leaving the CAD system. We can now confidently move on to innovation on other areas of the brake assembly. Who is M2 Technologies? M2 Technologies is the leading manufacturing design solutions provider in the Northeast, providing services such as training, consulting, and project shadowing. We are a simulation specialized Autodesk Gold Partner, as well as an Autodesk Authorized Training Center. We have a deep roster of talented technical specialists with expertise in design, data management, CAM, and simulation tools. We have several locations throughout the Northeast, but we provide services all across the USA. Thank you for your time today.